you're watching the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. Now here's your hosts, Tom, Nick, Ryan, and Dave. It's you, it's me, it's N-R-D. It's you, it's me, it's N-R-D. Uh-huh. Let's start the show. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, it is you, it is me, it is N, it is D, it's the Ned Broadcast, everyone. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 162 of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. It is me, Dave C. The Voice, future king of the nerds, the founding father, Mr. Nick Carpenter. And folks, me and Nick struggled on what we are going to talk about tonight, um, but I did want to just plug something before we even start. I didn't even tell Nick about this. So, for those of you who don't know... I'm a DJ here in the wonderful state of New York, the Empire State. Um, and I have now officially launched a separate Instagram page and it revamped my Facebook professional page. It was my Voice of Panis page. Now it is the DJ Davis the Voice page. So if you haven't already done so, if you follow us on social media, you're following the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast on Facebook at WNRDB on Instagram. Make sure you follow DJ Davis the Voice on Instagram and Facebook. It's great, and if you're getting married or have a sweet 16 or a quinceanera, having a divorce party, having a graduation party, a prom, you want the best in entertainment, there's only one choice. DJ Dave, see the voice. Boom, it's that simple. Yeah. I want to say I've seen the video. What is it? Was it a middle school dance? Yes. That's what I figured. And you had the middle school dance rocking. I mean, I remember going – the middle school <laughs> dancing, and it was quite a bit more dancing than any of my middle school dances. So – <laughs> so we'll just get completely off topic here. So I DJ'd, um, I have a, I have a contract with a middle school that I do all their school dances and they had a, a Valentine's day dance last Friday. Now Valentine's day dances, as a lot of you can remember from, from your elementary and middle school and high school days, they can be a little hard because you've got the boys standing on one side of the gym and the girls dancing on the other. Let me tell you this, this dance was from 5 PM to 8 PM Miami time. I probably played an hour of taylor swift alone throughout the whole thing and like it just literally the dance started at five i'm playing music no one's coming in the gym because they also they, no one's coming in the auditorium because they have the gym open too i guess like kids can play basketball or whatever over there and nobody's coming into the auditorium to dance i'm like oh no 10 minutes go by i play a taylor swift song packed dance floor there you go. Packed. oh my goodness and That's what's great is i'm i'm throwing <laughs> Oh, I'm throwing out glow sticks the entire time, too. It looks like Naomi's entrance or Trinity, if you watch TNA. Um, and then the I'm like, I always count down how many songs I have. I'm like, oh, I've got three songs left. So if you haven't danced yet, now's your time. I got two songs. Left. And I'm like, all right, I've got one song left. What should we play? And, the, and all the boys are like wanting some random song that I've never heard of because they live in a TikTok world where they only know 15 seconds of a song and think it's appropriate. Um and all the girls are yelling for Taylor Swift. Like, literally, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. I was like, well, I mean, the Super Bowl is this Sunday. Should I play Travis Kelsey's girlfriend song? And you could hear all the boys go, no. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, well, screw you. Boom. Played 22. Kids went, oh, oh. it's fantastic. <laughs> so, yes, folks, if you're looking for a DJ in the great state of New York, there's only one choice. DJ Dave, see the voice. You can hire me. I don't know if I'm my Oh, I do have a business card just laying around here. How do you like that? Boom. There's your man right there. Been in this industry for over a decade. Let's go. So let's see. What else do we want to talk about besides my, I, my I hate chain of I'm going to get up here, but I'm going to lose charge if I don't figure out my charger situation. Uh-oh. So, folks, while Nick's talking about <laughs> that, I'll just go over all the bullet points right here. Uh, for everyone that's watched the cruise vlog – uh, to everyone that has watched um, our recap with Jason Rich last week, we thank you for joining us on that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Um, but so something that has come up in the world of wrestling hmm. is uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has decided to step his tiddly toes back into the wrestling world once again. Are you charged? You're good? Uh, I think so. Oh, boy. Oh, no. If Nick just cuts out, it's the D show, ladies and gentlemen. We're giving you the D on the broadcast. Um, so, so Dwayne the Rock Johnson is now one of the. Uh, he's on the board of directors for TKO, uh, the company, the parent company of um, WWE and UFC, and 
depending on whose reports you read and who you believe, um, he kind of has bullied his way into a main event match at WrestleMania. Um, now, here's the thing. Everybody loves Dwayne. Everybody loves The Rock. He's very excited. But now we've got Heel Rock. Um, and he's going after my guy. He's going after the wonderful man, my best friend. He's invited to my wedding, Mr. Cody Rhodes. Now, what I'm interested to see is, now they haven't announced anything yet. Roman Reigns has not been advertised for Elimination Chamber in Perth next week. Um, or this coming week, I think, when, it, when this airs. Uh, and so... There is a lot of rumor and speculation on how The Rock, how Roman Reigns, how Seth Rollins, and how Cody all come together on the Tom Says Highway to Mania. So I don't know how they're going to do this, and I'm very curious as to what the original plan was because it was kind of right there. before. Now, I think CM Punk getting injured changed things a lot. Um, So... I, I'm I'm still not 100 percent sure of what they're going to do, but from what I've read, the 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 constant is Saturday night, night one, the main event is Cody Seth versus The Rock and Roman in a tag match. Sunday night main event is Roman versus Cody for the WWE Universal Undisputed Championship. You can't be undisputed champion when there's two champions, though. Just that's another thing. Um but then the question becomes, is The Rock just doing that tag match? Which I'm all for. If that's all his involvement is, and then you can do The Rock versus Roman down the line, maybe at SummerSlam or something, cool on you. Because the winner of the Elimination Chamber is going to face Seth Rollins for the ta- for the world title. So I would say you could do Rock beats Seth on night one um, in the tag match. Then Cody can beat Roman on night two. Roman can be like, oh, I was exhausted from carrying my cousin during the whole thing. Seth can eke out a win against um, Drew McIntyre, who's my pick to win the chamber. He's already qualified, time recording. He beats Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Monday night rolls along, and Drew McIntyre comes out and beats the ever-living crap out of Seth Rollins, and guess what? Mr. Money in the Bank, Mr. Senor Money in the Bank comes in, cashes in, and beats Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. Nick, what's your thoughts on all this? You've been quiet so far. I mean, yeah, I could agree with a lot. I think I think that they all had the plan always to go Rock versus Roman and Mania. I think that was the 100% the clear plan, and they didn't anticipate how everybody was going to react, I guess, to Cody and how mm-hmm. it's like basically – Basically, they had no choice but to turn Rock heel. And I, I mean, I applaud them because, I mean, this is like the Daniel Bryan thing all over yeah. again from 10 years ago with where it was Grant Thornton and Batista and everybody wanted Daniel Bryan. I remember how long they dragged that out? Oh, my God. Yeah, and like three, I think tried, it was like three weeks before Mania. And then they're they like, tried okay. everything to make that not happen. And, yep. <laughs> it was a complete train wreck. So I feel like that at least they had the wherewithal to instantly be like, okay, Rock's getting booed. Let's just turn him heel right away. Yeah. And do this. So, I mean, it's smart. And I agree with a lot. Like, I think the tag match, they're going to have the tag match at night one. I would even think it would be cool to do like the tag match and then the next night do Cody versus Roman and then have the Rock versus Seth in a single match. I think that would be interesting too. Well, the only problem with doing Rock in a singles match the next night against Seth is because they've already announced the winner of the Elimination Chamber is going to face. Seth uh, for the title. So that's that's the only thing there. Huh. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought that too. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a triple threat, Rock, Cody, and Roman, um, just to get him in there or some or you know, you could just have the rock try and run interference when I because that's the one thing they've always said, or I think um I think it was Seth said when when the the raw after the press conference, he was like, We know how this happens. Roman has his match. He fights hard, hits a finisher, and then Solo comes out. Then Jay comes, or Jimmy comes out. Paul Heyman gets involved. Like, we've seen this before. It's the same thing over and over again. Never seen The Rock get involved. So maybe that's how that gets different. Um, I've seen an idea, too. Somebody, this is not my idea. I've seen somebody else say it, though. But uh, that they take 
the Rock versus Roman all the way to the next WrestleMania and basically have like Roman relinquish everything, be like, Rock, you are now the tribal chief. Here, here's you could have the chief. I mean, imagine the heat if he had this belt this long and he just hands it to the Rock and oh, stuff like man. that. And eventually building up to where they could turn Roman babyface from yep. all this again. My only fear is that if Cody does not beat Roman this time, it looks bad. And I have a feeling he's not going to. As ter- like yeah, as I do. as much as I don't want to speak that into existence, I don't think he does because you're he passes Hulk Hogan, I want to say September 12th. I could be wrong in that. Like that in September, if Roman holds the belt, he would pass Hulk Hogan for second or third all time title reign. I, I don't know all the numbers. I know Bruno San Martino held it for like eight years. Um, so I think they're going to let Roman carry this for eight years. I just really think at this point, you might as well just lean into it. They're all like, AEW's got to die eventually. Oh, We're just going to keep holding this down. There's two things that always come to mind with me with the Cody thing. One, and I agree with you, I don't think he's going to win. Uh, oh, is boy. Look who's running the show now. Like, you, I mean, you can't you can't smash thrones with sledgehammers. And it's, oh, <laughs> no. No, you know? and the only thing I keep thinking is, do you think it's possible that like Cody could end up back in AEW? <laughs> well, I've heard that like that they were they offered him an extension in October, but he never signed it. Now, and I'm here, I'm like, uh, it'd be pretty wild if he did. I mean, he he's, top, he, he's a top guy, though. Dude. I mean, he is, he, and I think he's got. You know, I think. And I always saw thoughts is like if anyone is going to WWE of the Elite when they started it, it was like it's gonna be Cody because he wants that WWE title. And I don't think you can dangle that carrot in front of fans so long. And it's like Hangman was a slow, perfect build, and there was there was more to it. It, it had layers in that story. Whereas Cody lost to Roman the next night is like I'm gonna tag with somebody to take on Roman gets beat up by Brock Lesnar and then fights Brock Lesnar and then didn't do anything, teamed with a drunk Jey Uso, uh, yeeted a bit, and then he's like, okay, I'm going to win the Royal Rumble. So now we're just back to where we were. Like, it feels like everything Cody did the last, like, 10 months was all just holding pattern to get to here. Like, let's try this again. Like, it it's... It's like being a sports fan. Like, okay, the Yankees having a great season. All right, here we are in the playoffs and swept by the Astros. Shit. Okay, let's try it again this year. We've got this. Same, run it right back. Exact same people. It's like the, it's and, like being a Commanders fan and like thinking you're going to sign Ben Johnson as your coach, and then he he says he doesn't want to be your coach after all the other good coaches <laughs> already signed, and you get Dan Quinn as your Dan coach. Quinn. <laughs> you know what Dan Quinn's most famous for? Blowing a big lead. It happens. And you know what? Paul Heyman says, like, I think he said last year, like, we're only in the bottom of the third. Well, we've played a quick six innings, I think. It's time to get to the – let's wrap this up. Let's bring in the closer. Finish the story of WrestleMania because I'll say this. They've called it out on TV that every Roman match is the same, and they're right. It's it's run its course. I, I don't see how you get another year out of this, like, without <laughs> people just being like, this is bull. And everything points that like Cody should win, and like that's like with the story, like it's how it should end and stuff. But I just honestly, not the same thing. I honestly just don't think he's gonna win. I'm like, if Hogan wasn't right there, <laughs> I'm like, oh man. And I'll say this: the way that uh, how you said that they immediately had to pivot after the Rock, but you noticed that the Rock got such an ovation on SmackDown. You know what it made me think of? It made me think of WrestleMania 35 when they're like, uh, Alexa Bliss was the host. She was like, I can do things like this. Boom. Real American (laughs) blares through MetLife Stadium. And everyone was just like, let's go. And I'll never forget. A man stood like three seats down. He goes, wait a second. This dude's a blatant racist, but the song slabs. I am a real love. And he's posing. Well, I'm like, it just has that effect. Like, I, I agree. Not, we can't hate you, sir. Like, you just have that effect on people. But, um, although I did see one meme, it was like, Seth is not the man to help Cody take on the rock. This man is. And it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm like, ah, oh, be perfect. Yeah. 
Um, his mullet. This is the commercial. He's got the his mullet. Mullet Austin. Come on out. Oh That's man, the- that that was great. <laughs> Looking like Jared out here. Oh. Steve Austin Wait. wishes he had Jared. Austin, I'm gonna say Austin wishes he had Jared. <laughs> no, nobody's listen, I've touched Jared's hair. It's very soft. Man conditions. So let us know your comment, your thoughts in the comment section below on what your thoughts are on Rock and Roman and Seth and Cody and what you think will be the main events of WrestleMania and what their involvements will be, whether there'll be single matches, tag matches, multiple matches. Let us know in the comments below. Something else you can comment is about this man, Mr. Dan Housen. You know why? Because he's got one of these now. Imagine if I actually pulled out the Dan Housen one. No, 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 folks. I'm I'm getting married in September. Uh, so that's why you need to book me to be a DJ for your event so I can afford it and I can afford to buy other they things have, like this. I started seeing people post today that they had them in hand. Yep, Dougie got his. They look fantastic. There's a Colt Cabana one, 75 limited edition of that. I still um, have an old one. I'm going to get one. Maybe Colt should be the one I should get that one. I'm trying to think. What I, like, yeah, Colt, I, think, I think Colt he, makes sense. He loves sense. Colt Cabana. So that makes that means there's five now, right? Did they do two Ric Flairs or one? I, I'm the wrong it was one. One, I'm, one Ric Flair, and it was bloody. I think it was I'm bloody not the Ric historian. Flair. I haven't made the checklist. That's somebody else's duty to make the checklist. <laughs> so they did two machos because this one was like limit 250. Um, then they did like the pink gear pre order, however many you want. Then they did Ric Flair bloody, and now they've done Dan House and, and now Colt. So there's five in total. So, um, I, I personally, I think these things are great. They remind me of my childhood. It's definitely a little smaller than what I had growing up, or maybe I've just gotten a lot bigger, but, um, I think this one is definitely a pick and choose kind of what, what wrestling you get. Like if they did another macho man or, um, somebody who's been on the broadcast, I'd probably get it. Like do an Ian Riccoboni one. I'd be all for that. Have you seen the ones that some wrestlers have had? They're like this, but they're like really crappy ones. And they're only on one side, the other side, but it's just blank. It's like the yeah, some, side. Like they did Chelsea Green, and Chelsea Green yeah, is a beautiful woman, and just like it's her face, and then like her hair's like here. I'm like, what what the I mean, hell that looks is like this? Good quality. Some you of them look with, good, but some of them are just stand, the one the pro wrestling tease one. Do you think it would withstand like the beating of a two year old on a daily basis? I mean like it's weird because it's like one solid piece here. I like knowing a child, like I feel like you can just, you know, maybe rip that because it is thin, you know, it's not a lot there. Um, I think it could definitely take a pounding. Okay. Well, pause. Okay. <laughs> uh, things that make you give one of these looks, but yeah, no, I mean, these I had to take the snake when I was a kid and I'm sure that I beat the crap out of that thing on a daily basis. I had, I had Hulk Hogan and uh, Ted DiBiase. And man, the elbow drops I yeah. get out of my bed on it. I just walk, bam! Like I'm surprised my elbow is like in as good a shape as it is at the age of 35. But no, I think these are great. I hope they continue them. I hope they don't go on the rampage that they've gone on with like micro brawlers. Um, but yeah, no. So Dan Housen is out now. Colts might be available by the time you saw it. I mean, his whatnot <laughs> brawler is still for sale on PWT. So, um. But yeah, let us know in the comments. Who's who's next? Not Goldberg. He's not next. Um, let's see what else we got to talk about. We got new micro brawlers coming. We had a pre-order yes. right now for uh Abraham Lincoln. Four is- scores in seven years ago. Seven days ago, I should say, probably is when it dropped. Our forefather, Ryan Barkin, at the Pro Wrestling that's all. The original founding father, <laughs> Ryan to Barkin. Us, Abraham Lincoln. Yes, we got the and one. I'll say this. I, I think it would <laughs> I, I'm not against Abe Lincoln because you know what I'll say this. I feel like nobody really has a bad thing to say about Abe Lincoln. Like he's not a controversial president. Mm-hmm. Um he's a he's arguably if like you're playing family feud, I always say, like if you're playing family feud, name a president, Abe Lincoln's a top three answer. He might even be number one. Like I'd put probably Lincoln over Washington. Right, maybe. Um, I thought, yeah, definitely. I think so it's like, because Lincoln got assassinated in the way he did. I don't know. It's like the whole his whole story is like crazy. Top three Tuesday. Name your favorite presidents. Uh, I'm gonna go, uh, Grover Cleveland, uh, Kennedy, and uh, let, let's uh, Herbert Hoover. 
Let's get really random in here. I don't want my <laughs> guess my affiliation. Three right. times. Um, but yeah, no, I I had made the I had made the joke in our Patreon chat, patreoncom slash WNRDB. I think what they should have done was release every president every uh every half hour as Danhausen. Uh, but I did. <laughs> I also made a comment. I was like, I think they should release a new president every year, and it will inspire me to live another fifty years to collect them all. Because I figure, with the pace you go, fifty years now you're electing. I'm trying to think how many presidents you could potentially elect in fifty years. Uh, Do that. 10 approximately give or take re-elections and whatnot um but yeah so we're at what 45 right now 46 46 presidents maybe but yeah no so release one every year and it'll inspire me to live into my 90s well into my 90s if they have big heads like the ones that race at the national game oh my god <laughs> teddy roosevelt teddy there roosevelt. you go oh, oh, there you go teddy next year do a teddy do a Teddy Roosevelt micro brawler, and then you do the the brawler buddy, because that's what they named him after. They named the teddy bear after Teddy Roosevelt. You're welcome, everyone. There's your fun historical fact. Don't tell you. But Abraham don't Lincoln tell you we're not educational. On this at least Abraham Lincoln w- was a wrestler. Like he actually was a real wrestler. Teddy I'm Roosevelt like walked yeah. softly and carried a big stick. He was fighting off bears in national park. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, Abraham Lincoln wrestled with a bear. Actually, that's what somebody said. Somebody said they were going to display him next to Bernard the business bear because of that. Oh my god! <laughs> I just thought of something so horrible. The way Blake. No, I don't know if I can say this. I don't know, Dave. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this on the broadcast. So I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> I can't. Exactly. No, I can't say. This. Um, but folks, uh, so yeah, let us know what president you're looking forward to seeing uh, in the next batch of brawlers. Uh, I like I said, Grover Cleveland for micro brawler. Look it up. The only man to be elected on two separate occasions. Abraham Lincoln should be the one and done. Is what I say for presidents. President of Pro Wrestling Tees, Ryan Barkin. Ryan Barkin. Um, and then another micro brawler we have coming our way is Jordan Grace. Is that another. Yes, uh, Listen, I, listen, all the Mikes and Ikes, you know, regardless of what camp you sit in, um, are excited about this. You know, I'm all for adding more women to the brawler community. Um, I think I figured it out what my gripe is, that it's the makeup that they put on these women yeah. that ruins the face for me for whatever reason. Just because, like... It's so molding. Like, the it, male brawlers have, like, molding to their face. The yeah. women's brawlers have completely flat faces with, like, paint. Yeah, it just and yeah, just something's off. The top. But I don't it, think hers is that bad. Honestly. It's not as bad. It's not the worst woman's brawler we've ever seen. Um, just offhand guessing, I can't even see my bra. I wish I could see my brawler better. Um, just offhand guessing, I'd say Luna Vachon is probably the best women's brawler they've yeah. ever made. Probably in terms of like face, you know, I face guess. detail. Um. But no, the Jordan Grace one looks phenomenal. She's in amazing shape in this thing. She got her six pack. She got all her muscles in places you don't. She's got muscles in places most people don't have places. Um, gears phenomenal. She got the hair with the braid on one side. And and it, like the, it's the not a it's variant either. It's like a completely new mold. It's like a completely new yep, color. It's completely it's new. Because in the old one, she has like straight hair or whatnot it looks complete i'll say it's compare this brawler to the previous jordan grace brawler looks so much more accurate and she's of- paying for these, just like her husband's one these are all going yeah they're they're uh they're not through pro wrestling these are through yep. jordan yeah, you gotta go web- through her website for it so um let us know if you decided to get a, a jordan grace micro brawler or not um and who the next uh woman you wrestler or talent you would like to see Added to the collection. Um, I, I, what else do we have? We got anything else? We didn't have Tom today. We don't know like what the hell to talk about, folks. So that's that's why we're yeah, just Tom, all over the place. The show. Let's. I have- mean, listen. I'll say this: we came in unprepared. To, we came in unprepared to this broadcast. But you know what? At least I knew the rules for overtime in the Super Bowl, and like the San Francisco 49ers. You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> Listen, folks, overtime in the Super Bowl. Both teams will get a chance to possess the ball even if the team that gets the ball first scores a touchdown. It's not that I think hard. It, it was the greatest Super Bowl of all time that I ever watched, honestly. And I thought it was boring at the very beginning. But then I by would the say end. the greatest Super Bowl of all time was Super Bowl 55. You know why? Because I was cu- – I the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won that Super Bowl 31-9, to and I was still nervous up until a minute left. 
Like until I saw Tom Brady shaking hands with Patrick Mahomes, I didn't believe it was happening. Like somebody literally texted me during that Super Bowl, like, congrats, dog, you got this. And I was like, two minutes, a lot of time left. A lot of th-. They're like, you're up 22 points. I'm like, a lot of time. A lot of time left. Like we get a touchdown, extra point, get onside kick, get it again. Onside. I'm like, my dad's like, calm down. It's it. You got this. I'm like, huh. shut up, old man. Um, no, fantastic Super Bowl. I enjoyed it quite quite a lot. Uh, plenty of wrestlers there too. It was nice to see wrestlers coming together at the Super Bowl. Oh, Bailey, Bailey, Doctor Britt Baker, Mercedes Monet, Naomi. They were all there. Naomi had the 49ers logo in her hair. I didn't even notice that until today. It's fantastic, but yeah, the uh, just like main event Jay Uso. Uh, the 49ers showed up in the first part of the show and not the main event of the show and uh, just kind of quietly went into the night. So it happens. But Taylor Swift is happy, so which means my fiance is happy. And my nephew, too, who's actually a Chiefs fan. So shout out to – I won $125 in my uh, brother-in-law's pool, too. It was fantastic. Did you win any money on the game? Did you gamble, I, Nick? I did, but I was not uh... – on the winning side, I even bet from the Chiefs and stuff, but it just didn't didn't work out. I took the Chiefs. I took the Chiefs money line. I took heads on the coin toss, and I also took if somebody would kick a walk off field goal. And man, was I close on that last one! I was like, <gasps> but it wasn't meant to be. So let us know who's going to win the Super Bowl and why it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the comments below, everyone. Um, Anything else? We got anything else? No. Get well soon, Tom. Yeah. He's not feeling well. Let give Tom some love in the comments below. He's not feeling great today. So uh I'm also so follow Tom's Got Glasses on Instagram. Tom came up with a new uh a new optometry page for himself. So go check that out if you're in the New York City area. Uh March 16th through the 17th, I believe it is. He's going to the uh the Javits Center for a big uh lens expo. So Check that out as well. Tom's got glass on Instagram. Tom's good people. So go check him out on Instagram. Check me out. DJ Daisy the Voice on Instagram. Check Nick out on Instagram. Oh, wait. Nick doesn't have Instagram. His wife does, though. So shout out to Linda Carpenter. For being I'm, I'm, I'm almost 40. I don't know me to Instagram. <laughs> check out Nick's top eight on MySpace, y'all. Maybe we'll give you a yeah. shout out next week. Let's see, Let's see who, who's on the top. Yeah, I just uh, fluctuate. I mean, obviously, it's, it goes – the puppets are two and three, you know, Spaceman George is four, but Tom, Tom and Dave fluctuate around five or six. Wow. But, five or six. Okay. Everyone. Thanks. You know, you're not puppets or a spaceman. Uh, so the disrespect, the absolute disrespect. Maybe if you're a whole, a whole Herald winner and not a half Herald. Winner. I am a whole Herald award winner. It says <laughs> so on my trophy. 2023 Herald award, Don Wilson, big win of the year, baby. Wow. It's an honor to hold this trophy. So, folks, I guess that'll wrap up this episode of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. We've run out of crap to talk about. So, on behalf of myself, Dave C. The Voice, future king of the nerds, and your future wedding DJ, the founding father, Mr. Nick Carpenter, don't forget to follow us on all platforms, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Don't forget to follow my DJ page. Don't forget to follow Tom's Glasses page. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash WNRDB. We can join our chat. And you can pledge to the Patreon and support the channel for as little as a dollar a month. If you want to support the channel for free, make sure you hit that subscribe button below, Nick. Also, if it's cold outside where I live, when I uh, had to show up my driveway the other day. So check out ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. That's nerd spelled N-R-D. Get your sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats, hoodies, and so much more. It's great stuff. Uh, and yeah, like I said, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. So on behalf of myself, Dave, I'm that guy, Nick. Don't forget to tell your mother you love her every day because like Kevin Ryan said, Mom, you're the real MVP. Good night, everyone, and God bless America.